Eric Bowling in for Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Let's get straight to our top story. Donald Trump enters the no spin zone. We've got a lot to get to with the Republican presidential nominee, and he joins us now on the phone from New York, hot off his big meeting with President Peña Nieto of Mexico. Donald, after you had that meeting and after you made the, the speech after the meeting, Hillary Clinton took to the podium and said, um, diplomacy isn't as easy as, as it seems, is it, Donald? And she, I think she's taking a little bit of a shot at you. Is there anything you learned w spending time with President Nieto, Peña Nieto, that will help the two countries work, to, work together better? Well, Hillary Clinton's wrong. I think we had a great meeting. It was well covered by, I guess, as much as anybody's ever been covered in one of these meetings. And, you know, I'm not even a president. I guess it was pretty unusual because as a president, you get this kind of coverage, although they didn't get as much. Uh, as far as Hillary's concerned, uh, learning, how has she done in Libya? How has she done in Iraq? How has she done with the Iran deal and all of the other things? Like, she started that horrible Iran deal that's now blowing up all over the place, one of the worst deals ever negotiated. I mean, for her to be saying that, and that's just a soundbite given to her by her handlers. You know, she's got handlers. And that's just a soundbite. No, we had an amazing day. And I've been given great credit by uh, by almost everybody that's fair. You know, I mean, the fair people uh, give credit, the, uh, the ones that aren't. And I know what's good and bad. I, in other words, Eric, I will tell you if something wasn't good. You know that. You know me. But, uh, no, we had a very – it was a very successful day from the standpoint can – you, can you, Don, can you work with them? Can you work with Penny oh, to, 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 I don't know, A, build the wall, B, can, you know, stop the, the trafficking, the drug trafficking, yeah. the human trafficking going back and forth? Yeah, absolutely. I think, first of all, it was a very successful day for myself and for the United States and hopefully for Mexico, too. We can absolutely work with them, and we have to stop the drug trafficking, the, the human trafficking. You look at what's happening on, at the border. It's incredible. And the wall will get built, and in fact, that was sort of acknowledged if you look at the statement. And uh, he disagrees on who's going to pay for the wall, but that's a negotiation, and I will tell you that the United States will not be paying for the wall. Mexico will be paying for the wall. You know, if so, I now, if I become president, now somebody else becomes president, probably, uh, you know, it will go right down the tubes like it always does with the politicians. You know, I su suggested on this show last night after after your meeting with uh, Peña Nieto that maybe you use both Mexican and American laborers. They'll defray some of the cost of Mexico paying for the wall. Just a thought. Um, talk to me a little bit about the pay for again. Someone had written something up today about possibly getting some of the money seized from the drug cartels to pay for that wall. There are many ways that they can pay for the wall. But you have to understand that we have a massive trade deficit with Mexico, a massive. Uh, beyond belief, not of China category, because China is over $500 billion a year. We have real geniuses doing our negotiating, Eric. Uh, but we have a massive trade deficit that makes the cost of the wall pale by comparison. So uh, they will. I must tell you, I have great respect for the president. We had, I thought we got along very well. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just really a a, a very early session, and we have to see. I mean, I think he invited me because he thinks we have a very good chance, and I guess based on uh, the polls that I've been seeing over the last three or four days, uh, we certainly seem to. All right, Mr. Trump, the, um, the State Department, and even perhaps the White House, is said to be uh, maybe unhappy with the Mexican president for receiving you. What's your message to the State Department and the White House? <laughs> Well, I don't get involved with that. I mean, obviously, the White House is unhappy with it, but they have to go back to, you know, maybe spend more time negotiating the Iran deal, which is looking like it's one of the great scams of all time. I mean, it's it's now coming apart. People are learning what's going on and what went into it. Uh, that deal I was watching today, and that deal is just a total catastrophe. And also, it's emboldening them. When you look at the uh, in the seas where you see the, the little boats scooting around our our ships and the way they're taunting us and taunting the captain of the of the ship and you look at what's happening and it's horrible but they are actually taunting us and you know they beat us so badly they are they truly feel again they feel emboldened by what they did with that deal and to think that they on top of everything else got 400 million in cash in actual cash 
brought in by boxes. Who ever heard of a thing like this? Yeah, 400 million and maybe a billion seven. I was staying last night, though. Last night, uh, after your meeting with uh, Peña Nieto, you delivered a 10 point, very, very um, extensive policy statement on immigration. Some Hispanics were up in arms. Jorge Ramos, what, probably one of the more biased journalists, journalists around had a really hard time. He was attacking you, but he's also attacking, attacking Peña Nieto. What do you say to Jorge Ramos? Well, that's only, I think Jorge's actually a nice guy, but I just don't do a show. So, you know, if I did a show, I'm sure I'd be very happy. But, you know, the, uh, the fact is that I, I can't say how it played from the president's standpoint, but it certainly played well, I think, from the standpoint of the United States. I think it played very well in terms of uh, people knowing that if I'm president, we're going to protect our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially, I mean, you look at Mexican-Americans, how incredible they've been in this country. But, no, I, I've gotten very high marks on it. And, you know, we're going to have strong borders. We're going to stop the drug flow into our country, which is destroying our youth and destroying our I mean, it's destroying our country. The, the drugs are pouring in. It used to be certain states were having it worse than others, like New Hampshire. Well, every time I'm in New Hampshire, it's the, it's the number one thing on their mind. But I just left Ohio. And drugs are like the number one thing on the mind. You look at what's happening. You look at the overdoses on a daily basis. The p police departments can't even handle them. And it's a very, very sad thing. And we have to close up the border. You know, the Border Patrol, or the 16,500 Border Patrol agents endorsed me, and which was a great honor. First time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate. And they told me that the wall is a very, very important factor. So, so talk to me a little bit about this. Uh, Hispanics have, some Hispanics have pushed back today post-speech from last night. Tell, give us a reason. Tell us why Hispanics should vote for Donald Trump. Because I'm going to bring jobs back, because we're going to have safety. You see what's going on in our cities and in our inner cities. You take a look at the tremendous amount of crime that's happening. And, I mean, look at some of these inner cities where many, many uh, Hispanics are living. But you look at the crime where people are being shot and killed just by walking down the street. Their children are being killed. And they know that I will stop that so fast. And one of the things in my plan is, as you know, we're going to strengthen the border, we're going to build the wall, we're going to do all of these more than strengthen the border, but we're going to make a very strong border, and we are going to get rid of the thugs and the criminals and the drug dealers and all of the bad players that are here illegally. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. We're getting rid of them immediately. Day one, hour one, what we're going to start the, rest, the process. Though? What about the rest? What about, you know, okay, if, if that's so, a million, and, and what about very, the other No, 10? no, but yeah. very simple, and I think people love this, and a lot of people didn't quite understand it. And, you know, part of the reason they didn't understand it, Eric, because we had 15,000 people there yesterday, and they were going wild. You saw that. They were loving it. They were having a lot of a lot of, I think, a lot of respect for what I was saying, but they were going wild. The, you, you heard the cheering and the standing ovations. It was actually one standing ovation. They stood all night, but they were going wild. Uh, so what happens is this. We're going to strengthen the border, make it really, really strong. We're going to build the wall. We're going to get rid of all of the bad players that are here, the gang members, the gang leaders, the drug dealers, uh, all of the cartel people. We're going to get them out of our country because they're causing tremendous damage and crime and other things and getting the drugs spread all over the place. They'll be gone. After that takes place, which will be a process, and it won't go that quickly, but it's going to go as quickly as any human being can do it. After that takes place, we're going to sit back, we're going to assess the situation, we're going to see where we are, because we'll have people in the country that you know, that have come in illegally. We're going to sit back. We're going to assess the situation. We're going to make a decision at that time. I want to see, before we do anything further, I want to see how it shapes up when we have strong, you know, I use the word impenetrable borders, okay. but how it shapes up. And I think uh, we're getting really tremendous reviews on the plan. I got just a minute left, and I want to ask you about this, because I, th I see you're going to Detroit for an African-American outreach. What do you plan to do there? And what's the outreach statement? Well, really just that. We're going to have an African-American outreach. Look, I go over. First of all, I have so many African-American friends where they're doing great. And they're, they're making good money. They're, they're living a good life. They've got the American dream going. But you have tremendous numbers of African-Americans that have really had a hard time. I mean, beyond belief. And, uh, you know, I, I read the numbers where you have so many in poverty and the crime is horrible and the education is terrible. And they live 
terribly. And I say, what do you have to lose? I say to him, what do you have to lose? Give it to me. I'll, I'm going to fix it. And a lot of people are agreeing with me. What do you have to lose? The Democrats and the Hillary Clintons of the world have done a terrible job. She's been there for 35 years. She's done a terrible job. But the Hillary Clintons of the world have done a terrible job, Eric. And I say, what do you have to lose? I will fix it. And you know what? A lot of people are agreeing. All right. We're going to leave it right there. Mr. Trump, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Next on The Rundown, reaction to our interview with Donald Trump. And later, Democrats won't admit that sanctuary cities even exist why they could be putting all security of all Americans at risk upcoming.